following is an AZPM original production. Arizona Science is supported by Research Corporation for Science Advancement. For Arizona Public Media, I'm Tim Swindle, Professor Emeritus of Planetary Science at the University of Arizona, and this is Arizona Science. Joining me today is Robert Blum, Director for Operations of the Vera Rubin Observatory, an amazing new telescope that's in the process of coming online. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. It's good to be here with you. First, Bob, could you remind us briefly about what the telescope is and why it's unique? Absolutely. So the NSF DOE Vera C. Rubin Observatory is a new observatory built in Chile. We think it's uh, absolutely unique. We think of it as a discovery machine. So this observatory has a telescope that is both a large aperture telescope, so it gathers a lot of light, and it has a wide field of view at the same time. So it can cover the sky and go very deep. So the amount of volume of space that it, that it captures is unprecedented. It is uh, what we call big data, certainly for astronomy. There are other things in the world maybe that are bigger data, but for astronomy, it's, it's really ushering in a new epoch, a new age of, of big data for our community. And we also like to think of it as democratizing science because now you don't need connection to your own state-of-the-art facility. You need an internet connection and a web browser to connect to our science platform and do real science with some of the best data that will be available anywhere uh, for the next you know, 10 or more years. What are the sorts of things that you're expecting to find that will be changing? There's many, many things that uh, astronomers know about that change in brightness, variable stars, uh, explosive transients, um, black holes and, and neutron stars merging together and then exploding and, and creating light that can be followed up. Probably the most exciting prospect is that we might find something that, that's so rare that, and we haven't observed enough volume of space over enough time to find it yet. And so... We like to think of exploring or opening up a new uh, part of parameter space that we will explore with Rubin that we haven't been able to do before. If you think of how intrinsically luminous an object is and the time scale that it varies over, whether it's minutes or hours or days or years, it turns out that the brighter things that vary over longer time scales are easier to find, and we found most of those. And as you move toward that parameter space where there's fainter things that vary over a very short time scales, maybe there's a space there that we haven't explored yet. Has observing gotten into full swing yet? We are observing every night that we're able to because of the weather. It's, it's winter down in Chile right now, so we just went through a snowstorm uh, recently. But we're in the final phases of commissioning. And that final phase really does mean kind of ramping smoothly into operations and running like we would be running when we're running this survey that will start uh, soon. So we have many nights where we're taking hundreds and hundreds of images and sending those in real time back to California for processing. We're not doing this alert servicing yet like that I was talking about because we're still in commissioning, but we will be soon. How well is the telescope performing compared to what you were hoping? We now know that the telescope will do what we designed it to do. The capability that we designed is there. We have va validated that or verified that by looking at the sky and observing stars and galaxies. What is not quite there yet and what we're still working on is getting that performance all the time. And so we think of capability and reliability. We're still commissioning and getting the reliability uh, and the performance good all the time. So we still have a little bit of work to do, but that's, that's what we're concentrating on for the next few months. Many of us saw the first light images in June with millions of galaxies and stars and thousands of asteroids, but that's just a preview. How much observing did those images represent compared to what it will ultimately do? That is a really good question. I think that the amount of data we took that resulted in those so-called first look images, the first look of images with the, with the full system, was a couple percent of what we will see over the 10-year survey. Our guest today has been Robert Blum, Director for Operations of the Vera Rubin Observatory. This is Tim Swindle, and you have been listening to Arizona Science. You can also listen to this and other Arizona Science segments by going to the AZPM website at azpm.org.
Thank you to Research Corporation for Science Advancement for their support of Arizona Science. AZPM podcasts are made possible in part by donations from listeners like you. Learn more at support.azpm.org. Thank you.